Paddy from Ankispark and I'm here today just to talk a little bit about our new Black Box 3 multi-spark system. Uh, basically just to show you how easy it is to fit um, and then when I've done that then we're going to put it in the car and then we're going to go through all the menu items one at a time and look in a lot of detail all the different settings. So uh, the first thing to, to really to look at is uh, the wiring. So you'll see um, that it's got four terminals now it comes with a plug um, which or in fact it comes with two plugs one that you can wire permanently into the car and one you can keep in the house or workshop uh, if you want to take the black box off and program inside um, but it comes with a plug and it has four terminals um, and what we normally do is we, we connect up the four wires we make a sort of a longish loom um, we then put the positive and uh, negative terminals which are perfectly straightforward to power and earth and that leaves us the other two terminals which is the P terminal um, which would normally go to points or, or trigger and the coil terminal which goes to or C terminal goes to the coil um, so in this particular car we already made the loom up um, so the two wires that go to positive and ground are already fitted in and what we have are the two other wires the P terminal and the C terminal just terminating here now just to show you how easy it is to fit and it is obviously all in the wiring diagram that comes with it but just to show you how easy it is to fit all you have to do is you just have to locate the wire that runs from the distributor to your coil. You unplug that. You then plug the wire that's uh, your uh, P terminal into that wire there. So that then runs to either points or trigger. And the other wire, which is the C terminal, goes into the coil. That's it. That's all you have to do to wire it up. So the next thing would be is that you would then turn the, uh, turn the box on. Uh, you, on the box you then would set your uh, ad advance offset to whatever you want your initial timing to be so on this car we want our timing to be 10 so you, you turn it on set your advance offset to 10 you then come out you've already locked out your distributor uh, you start the car and you just set your timing with the timing gun to 10 degrees and now the car is now synced to the box so now you can adjust your uh, your initial timing on the box um, there's no need to ever touch the distributor again. Um, so I think now really um, we just all we need to do is just plug this into the car and then we can go through all the menu items and I can go through one, one thing at a time and just show you all the options on all the, all the items. Okay, so we've already done the basic setup with this car. We've uh, locked out our distributor. We've set our timing with the timing gun to 10 degrees and we've also entered in 10 degrees offset into the black box, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so uh, the black box and the car are now synced together. So all that's left to do is really to go through the other menu items in a little bit more detail. Um, before we do that though, um, I should just show you that we adjust the menu items or we go navigate the menu items with the left hand two buttons. And then when we're in a menu item, we adjust the settings with the right two. Um, also worth saying that the black box comes preloaded with a couple of maps. Fast row or map one's fast road four cylinder, map two is standard road uh, four cylinder, both of which you can then adjust to how you want. The map three is basically blank with a couple of default settings that really you don't need to adjust. Um, so I think the first thing now is to, uh, or the next thing is really to, to turn it on. So you can see there's on map three. That's now the live data screen. So if the car was running, it would show RPM advance and vacuum advance. And we can enter the menu items by pressing the positive key. It'll give us the first one, which is the map number. So we already know we're in map three. We don't need to adjust it, but if we did, we would just press the negative key. That would move us to map two or one. Um, and then it would automatically reboot and start again. And it should be noted that's the only item that saves itself. So all the other items, uh, unless you save it at the end, they're going to be lost when you turn it off. So that's worth remembering that. Um, so the next item is number of cylinders. You can have one, two, four, six, or eight. Um, you adjust them by just pressing the right hand key. So six, eight, we're on four, so we'll just leave it on four. Advance offset, so that's basically now your ignition uh, time, uh, initial timing. Um, we can adjust that, we can make that a nine, eight. We can do that with the car running and you'll be able to hear the change in the engine note. Um, so we're just going to leave that at 10. Uh, the next uh, item is the, the first of the uh, mechanical advance settings. So um, basically it goes up in 500 increments from 500 to 6,500. Um, it should be noticed, so 
we would normally start the advanced curve at about a thousand. So if I move to a thousand, let's just say move to uh, there, I've set it to one. Let's just say I had that at five. If I set that to five, what that would mean is that it would create a linear curve to the advance point prior to that. So if this is five, 900 would be four, 800 would be three, 700 would be two, 600 would be one, and 500 would be zero. Um, but we don't really want our advance to start till a thousand. So what we do is we put that on one. So the increase from 500 to a thousand is only going to be one degree. It's going to be negligible. So in essence, our advance is starting at a thousand. So I've already entered in the, the, the sort of a basic curve, 1506. I'm just sort of ramp it up quite quickly. So at two and a half thousand, it's uh, sorry, at three thousand, it's 24 degrees. And basically after that, I just want to leave it flat at 24. So I've entered 24 in all the ones after that. So the last setting is six and a half thousand um, plus. And all that means is now that everything after six and a half thousand will always be 24 degrees. And that's the that's that's then your complete advanced mechanical map done. Um, the next settings, we move into the vacuum settings. Um, this is covered in quite a lot of detail in another video, so I'm just going to quickly just give you the basic and just skirt over. So basically vacuum, um, you get zero vacuum at wide open throttle and maximum vacuum when cars ticking over and the throttle shut. The first setting here is where you want the vacuum advance to end and you normally have it ending somewhere between wide open throttle and closed throttle and in this case we know the wide open throttle is zero and we know that closed throttle on this particular car um, is around about 11 or 12 so halfway is about six maximum uh, vacuum so we know basically this car gets maximum vacuum uh, with the throttle closed and that's going to be 11 or 12 um, so we just moved to the so we've set it to 12 vacuum uh, vacuum advance maximum so i think in the previous video we did set this to 16 which proved to be a little bit a uh, bit too much so we've backed it down to about 10 and, uh, it actually runs much much better now boost um that's a, works exactly the same as vacuum really but in reverse um we're not using boost obviously on this car we're using vacuum so the settings are all zero Okay, vacuum advance start RPM. So this is the RPM where the vacuum, or the minimum RPM the vacuum will start. So if I was to put this at uh, 950, it means that any RPMs under 950, we'd had no vacuum advance. But I want the vacuum advance to be working at tick over. So as I know the tick over is about 800, this figure needs to be below 800. So we set it to come in at 700. So anything over 700, we're gonna get the vacuum advance working. Rev limiter, okay, so we've set this to five and a half thousand. So the red line on this car is 6,000 with an, with an orange warning at five, five. Um, so we're not looking to, rev, it's, not, it's not actually, we're not looking to race it. We don't want to blow the engine up. So um, it would be quite reasonable to have the rev limiter set to the normal red line. Um, so we've set it at five and a half thousand. Um, you can also set the type of rev limiter that you have. Um, so <clears throat> basically with a soft cut once it gets to five and a half thousand it will cut alternate cylinders to reduce the power so you can't then increase the rpms and you'll get a sort of a gentle gentle cut up from five and a half to six thousand rpm which is what we want if we set a hard uh, cut we go all the way to one which is hard it means that the the, the car will not spark over five and a half thousand rpm so you'll get a hard it will just stop dead the engine and you'll get that sort of uh that popping and banging that you often hear with cars um and that that would be your hard cut but we we prefer something a bit uh a bit softer so well prefer a soft cut so that's what we've set this car to quite on time uh five milliseconds that's pretty much a perfect uh, charge time for a coil. That's basically the, 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 the amount of time the coil needs to charge up to create the spark. There isn't a lot of reason. There aren't a lot of reasons to change that. Um, one reason, perhaps, if your car, if your coil gets hot, um, you could reduce the coil on time so it's working less hard, 
um, you could change it to four or three and if there's no uh, degradation in performance you might find the coil might run a little bit cooler um, but generally speaking it's it's factory set to five and unless you've got a reason I would leave it on five dwell measurement so uh, <clears throat> basically this measures your, your, your dwell now if you're running uh, a points trigger for this uh, for the blout box um, it will basically measure the points gap for you um, so the electronic triggers um, some are fixed dwell some are adaptive dwell basically it, you're not you, you're not able to make an adjustment but it just confirms what you've got and that everything's working correctly so this is an electronic ignition system but it is triggered by a traditional point a uh, traditional distributor now that distributor can have points or an electronic trigger in it so basically you just um we put points input yes or no but it's not quite as uh as, as simple as that so with uh points input if you have points it's pretty much 100 percent yes you're always going to have you know points input yes if you have a hall effect uh trigger like the AccuSpark, power spark alden igniter petronics that kind of thing most of the time points input no but there are circumstances, certain setups, where actually you 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 have a slight improvement when you have it on yes. So basically, if you're running points, you always say yes. If you're running electronic trigger, 99% of the time say no, but it's worth trying yes anyhow because it's not going to do any harm and it might run a little bit better. Then we come to the multi spark. Now the multi spark um, is a what it says a multiple spark system which is really designed around uh helping get the car started um basically what it does it or what it does do is it gives you five sparks at cranking speeds fuel doesn't behave exactly the same under when it's uh it's it's being compressed slowly um it doesn't circulate it doesn't mix it doesn't combine with the air quite so well um, and it can be harder to ignite so having a multiple spark um, will give you a better burn at low low rpms um, it does it, it has no effect at high rpms because the the, the fuel is fully mixed with the with the air um, and you're going to get a good combustion anyhow um, but at low rpms you're definitely going to see an improvement in a lot of cars now the choices you have you can have start only so you'll just get five sparks at cranking speeds and then once the car starts it, it turns off and you just get the single spark or you can have start and run which basically goes uh, a little bit over cranking speed so it might be sort of about 1500 you'll get five sparks four three two one diminishing so the theory is that it should it can help you um low speed up or low low rpms pick up so from a low very low rpm to for a quick acceleration it's going to give you a better better sort of pick up um, and that diminishes like I say up to about 1500, 1500 RPM where it essentially um, it's going to make no difference um, it's worth noting though that if you have it on start and run because you have multiple sparks it does throw your, your rev counter out at low RPM so you might find, find that your rev counter is reading double um, under 1500 RPM once you get to two three four thousand it's fine um, but that is a slight side effect of the start run. On the start only, no difference. It will work perfectly normally and you have no issues. Or of course you can just turn it off completely. We've got it on start, just start on this car. I think, oh, going backwards and forwards a bit. Right, start and turn. And then of course, last one is simply safe. So all you do is you just uh, press the positive, saving mount three. So all our settings are now uh, are now saved. Thank you for watching.